So a very warm good morning to all of you. And we are going to talk about a paradigm shift. Yes. We are going to talk about reversing diabetes. And please keep in mind, this very beautiful picture, which has a lot of science to explain. So we know that insulin resistance is a prime trigger uh, in causing diabetes. And the management of insulin resistance conventionally is with medications. And that actually leads to intensification of medications. And then insulin is started. And mind you, that is given for insulin resistance. And all this produce weight gain, which further perpetuate insulin resistance. This calls for a paradigm shift in an, our approach, an alternative approach, which actually This calls for a, a paradigm shift in our approach, an alternative approach, uh, which primarily would make use of non-pharmacological treatments as well. Now, type 2 diabetes has long been regarded as inevitably progressive, requiring increasing number of oral drugs and eventually insulin. But it is now certain that the process can be halted. Type 2 diabetes can be understood as a potentially reversible metabolic state precipitated by the single cause of chronic excess intra-organ fat. And that forms the basis for what we now call the reversibility of diabetes, which is fast emerging. Especially based on this pathophysiology, which was proposed by the pioneer in this field, Taylor et al. Now, it all starts with excess carbohydrates. Excess carbohydrate leads to increased lipogenesis. This leads to increased fat accumulation in the liver. And this fat accumulation in the liver causes resistance to insulin suppression of hepatic glucose production. There's increase in fasting plasma glucose level, increased basal insulin, and that again produces more lipids and there is more liver in the fat. So thus there is a vicious cycle so thus, there is a vicious cycle of hyperinsulinemia and blunted hepatic glucose production and blunted suppression of hepatic glucose. So what happens is, so what happens is there is export of VLDL triglyceride uh, to all tissues. This also include uh, the, this also include the pancreas, the islets of pancreas. And fat in pancreatic islets lead to impaired insulin, acute insulin secretion in response to ingested food. And that produces postprandial hyperglycemia. This hyperglycemia further increase insulin secretion. And when there is more insulin, there is more fat. There is more fat in liver. There is more fat in pancreas. And these two twin cycles, the cycle of liver and the cycle of pancreas, which contribute to pathogenesis of diabetes keep carrying on until clinical diabetes occur. And mind you, all this started with excess carbohydrates. So that is the, the current pathophysiology of type two diabetes where excess fat in liver and finally in the pancreas is driving the whole mechanism of decreased beta cell function and insulin resistance. But Beta cell function can be restored if liver fat is reduced through weight loss. And this cycle gets reversed. There will be decreased liver fat, decreased export of fat from the liver, decreased fat in pancreas, and beta cell function gets restored. And that calls for reversing body weight or bringing down body weight and adiposity, which would in turn reduce all these. And that's what we are looking at. And that's called remission. Now, it has been scientifically described in various ways. It could be a partial remission when HbA1c is brought down to less than 6.5 without any medications for more than one year, or when the fasting glucose is less than 100 milligram per deciliter for more than one year uh, without any medication. It, it's, uh, it's called complete remission, and various agencies have defined it in various ways. And prolonged remission is it when it uh, conventionally lasts for more than five years. Now, newer terminologies have come up. Some people, uh, some, uh, some researchers do say 
that when you reduce from three oral drugs to two oral drugs, it can either be called a reversal or a partial remission. And there are some newer definitions which have been proposed by uh, uh, researchers like Kalra et al. who say that you need not stop all drugs. Even when a patient takes uh, metformin, you can consider the patient to be in remission. The path breaking study in 2017, which was uh, presented in uh, uh, the International Diabetes Federation, uh, led to this talk about remission. And the primary outcome results of direct trial, that is the diabetes remission clinical trial, is what is important. And it told, it checked uh, whether diabetes can undergo remission in 49 primary care centers uh, by giving a, a, a food of 800 calories and trying to achieve weight loss. And what they found was diabetes remission was possible at 12 months. That means 46% of patients in the intervention arm did not require any drug to control their diabetes at the end of 12 months. And if they had lost more than 15 kilograms, 86% of patients did not require any drug. And they concluded that remission of type 2 diabetes is a practical target for diabetes care. Now, what happened two years later? The patients were followed up, and in 2019, the results got published. Originally, it was 46% who went into remission at one year, and at the end of three, two years, 36% of patients still continued to be in remission. So they concluded that type 2 diabetes is, irre is reversible, and it's not a lifelong illness. And even in those who did not achieve remission, you know, 50% reduction of diabetes medication was achieved. So one third of patients with early type two, this was patients with less than six years of diabetes underwent remission. And if they had lost more than 10 kilogram weight loss, then it was 64 percentage. Not that their blood glucose normalized, but also the blood pressure and serum lipids came down and the quality of life improved. So, the pathophysiology is getting redefined. And it didn't take long. The counterpoint study showed that the liver glucose handling returned to normal within seven days and beta cell function recovered in around eight weeks time. So now we have a possibility of reversing diabetes. But what about people with low BMI? Is it only for obese people? And that is where new thoughts have come and completely revolutionized the field. Now, diabetes risk, no doubt, steadily increased with increase in weight. However, the nurses' health study showed a four-fold increase in type 2 diabetes prevalence with BMI between 23 to 25 compared with those with BMI of 22 or less. So that means that it is just not obese people who are having diabetes. Even for a lean person, if he has gained weight, then he shifts his chance to have diabetes upwards. And once individuals have lost approximately three BMI units of weight, whatever be the baseline BMI, type 2 diabetes would go into remission. So the concept that the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes differ between those who have high BMI and low BMI is probably an artifact. And this comes as, this brings us to this most picturesque uh, you know, uh, slide as well as uh, revelation in the field of diabetes. And that's what's called the personal fat threshold. Now you can see here these red dots, which are the body mass index of people with diabetes. And these blue dots are the body mass index of those same people before they develop diabetes. And let's take three dots from that. One in the low BMI, one in the high BMI, and one in the very high BMI range. And what you see here, what we see is, each individual has a personal fat threshold. And for each such individual, removing to the right of their personal threshold, that means towards the red dot from their original blue dot. So that means when they increase their BMI, their, their, their fat threshold get triggered and type 2 diabetes develop. And when they move back from the red dot to the blue dot, that means when they reduce their weight to their original weight, then they restored normal glucose tolerance. So this is a huge revolution, which means that it is, it is unfair to say that some BMI is good and some BMI is bad. What we need to understand is each person has his own ideal body fat or body fat threshold, which probably is that weight 
which we all had when we passed out from our colleges. And thereafter, whatever weight has been added on has been the weight due to addition of fat. And if that fat can be reversed, then diabetes can be reversed. And this diabetes reversal can happen in up to 50% of patients, and that's not a small number. In early stages of diabetes, you need around 10 to 15% of uh, weight reduction to achieve reversal. Whereas if it's advanced diabetes, we need around 20 to 25% of weight reduction uh, to, 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 to achieve uh, remission of diabetes. So it is possible in any BMI, but only thing is that uh, with increasing duration, you need uh, to reduce more fat. So that is with increased duration, hepatic insulin sensitivity improves whatever be the duration of type two diabetes, but beta cell recovery decreases with increasing duration of diabetes. And not just the blood sugar, as I showed earlier, the blood pressure, lipids, cardiovascular risk, everything come down when fat is brought down. So the determinants of remission are shorter diabetes duration. Remission is better when the duration of diabetes is less. Lower HbA1c to begin with. So start early and not taking insulin and a greater weight loss at one year is associated with bigger remission. And usually we need a multidisciplinary team and the potential for a, uh, the lifestyle measures to reverse diabetes actually should be fully embraced with all the evidence we right now have. However, currently the situation is that many people are started immediately with drugs. So there is a need to retrain ourselves and make ourselves convinced as well as our patients convinced that diabetes reversal by lifestyle modification can happen and that should form the first line of treatment. And what matters is the waist. The waist circumference should be kept less than 90 centimeter in males and less than 80 centimeter in, in, in Indian females. If it can be even less, it would be better. Because we know that increased waist means increased fat and increased fat in all organs, especially the liver and pancreas, could be deleterious. And the early process of type 2 diabetes is actually reversible. And that was shown by this path-breaking study, the direct study, which said that type 2 diabetes is not for life. There had been a lot of interest in this after that study with a global report of WHO saying that reversal should be considered. The Barbados Diabetes Reversal Study, which proved that in, in an obese population. The look higher trial in which the remission rate achieved uh, in, the, in the intervention arm with intensive lifestyle intervention was three to six times higher. The predimet, which shows that low carbohydrate eating pattern improved A1C. So currently, potential for remission with dietary intervention is a huge revelation and that should be fully explored. We have uh, results from Netherlands uh, authenticating that and we had our own study in which we did it in our own uh, uh, diabetes center and within three months, we could achieve weight loss in 86% of participants and 72% either decreased or stopped drugs. And we, public, we, we presented this in the last IDF meeting. So remission is possible. And, you know, if the drugs can be uh, at least reduced, we can consider that to be a reversal. Insulin treatment can be stopped uh, in many patients. We have also had experience where we have stopped insulin or brought down the dose in a huge way. Blood pressure lowering, lipid lowering, everything is possible. The Dutch primary care setting, there was a study which again underlined the fact. And this is something which should open our eyes. If we go by the conventional standard of care, diabetes remission can happen only in 0.23%. So we have, we have to step out of the box and we have to shed the status quo approach and we have to actively intervene and try to reverse diabetes. And believe me, it's possible in up to 50% of patients, especially in the early stages of diabetes. And how do we go about doing that? There are various methods like the bariatric surgery, the low calorie diet and carbohydrate restricted diet. And lifestyle changes and positive primary care experience would accelerate, it, accelerate that. So type 2 diabetes remission can be achieved by, by various forms of diet, like the Mediterranean diet, the low-fat diet, but evidence is strongest for very low energy diets and low carbohydrate diets. So carbohydrate restriction is the single most effective method for lowering blood glucose. 
No, we need to understand when we have a blood glucose value of 10 milligram per deciliter, actually what the bloodstream is carrying is only 5 to 10 grams of glucose. And actually, by just think that how much glucose are we, are, are we consuming uh, to sort of maintain uh, this blood glucose level, we need not take that much. A low carbohydrate diet could be either very low carbs when it is typically around 20 to 50 grams of carbohydrate consumption per day, or it could be an ordinary low carbohydrate diet where we would allow up to 130 grams of carbohydrate or a moderate carbohydrate diet, which is 130 to 230 uh, grams of carbohydrate per day. Now, this has a huge impact. So any of the methods of low carbohydrate brings down the A1C, brings down the weight. You can see here that HPA1C is brought down. It favors uh, the, the, the intervention, that is the low carbohydrate diet. There is weight reduction in the, the, the many meta-analyses have shown that. Many studies have reported that. And this is one very important matter which we have to keep in mind, that there is a U-shaped association between carbohydrate and mortality. And what is that? 50 to 55% energy from carbohydrate was associated with the lowest risk of mortality. And meta-analysis from all, carbo all cohorts, both low carbs, that means if you consume less than 40% carbohydrates or high carbs, which means if you consume more than 70%, then there is a huge mortality risk. So mortality is increased when carbohydrates are ex exchanged for animal-derived fat or protein and decreased when substitutions were plant-based. So this is again something which we need to understand. That Yes, there are many diets which calls for very, very low carbohydrate. Conventionally, we all eat very high carbohydrates. Both these are dangerous. And ideally, carbohydrate consumption should be kept around 50% of the total energy requirement every day, which is roughly around uh, 2,000 calories in a usual person. But we would target much less, especially in the initial stage, to achieve weight reduction. I'll come to that a few slides later. As I told you earlier, many patients can reduce or even discontinue insulin. And uh, a lot of trials uh, do give us, do show us the benefit. Now, when you go for a low carbohydrate diet, you have to be careful about the medications you give to the patients. Drugs such as metformin, GLP-1 agonists, and DPP-4 inhibitors are safe and they can be given. However, basal insulin should be reduced usually by around, uh, by around 50%. And thiazoldine dions also may have to be reduced, especially because they produce weight gain. But sulfonylureas, meglitinides, SGL22 inhibitors, bolus insulin, alpha glucosidase inhibitors, or 3070 combination of insulin will often have to be stopped because sulfonylureas and bolus insulins usually produce, uh, uh, produce hypoglycemia. Alpha glucosidase inhibitors are no more required with the, because with a low carb diet, the postprandial blood glucose will not go up. And uh, SGL22 inhibitors may be a bit dangerous, especially if there is uh, uh, some amount of dehydration. The blood glucose and bl blood pressure should be monitored because often BP also will come down and it will also call for reduction in blood pressure medications. So all these other medications I have told. So carbohydrate, the simple technique of carbohydrate restriction can bring down blood glucose and all these factors and possibly lead to remission of diabetes. And now it has been ac accepted by a lot of international agencies, the Diabetes UK, British Diabetes Association, WHO I already showed, the Scottish Guideline Network, ADA, ESD, all the guidelines today talk about remission. So how do we practically deliver that? One, food, good food is absolutely important. Then regarding physical activity, we have to be judicious. Do not start them simultaneously. Wait for the food to take effect and then implement uh, exercise. And various dietetic approach we saw would help. Family support is crucial. And with family support, uh, the, the reduction uh, would be much more. And not only that, uh, and not only that, all the family members, all the family members can actually uh, benefit, not just the patient, but we will see that all family members uh, would actually uh, benefit from, uh, from, from the procedure. So how we go about achieving that? So five, first, 
try to reduce weight. I already told you up to 10% reduction in early diabetes and up to 20% reduction of body weight in late diabetes would help uh, reversal and the ideal macronutrient composition should be maintained. Physical activity is very important, at least 150 minutes uh, per week. And various eating patterns are there. We know the Mediterranean style, the vegan style, the low fat, but by far the most effective one is the low carbohydrate method. And to achieve remission, we have to achieve the desirable weight loss, which is, I told, uh, around 10 to 15% in early and around 20 to 25% in late diabetes. There are various other techniques like the low, low, uh, low carb, high fat diet or the keto diet, but I already showed you what is the advantage of low carb diet and why the carbohydrate consumption should be kept at around 50%. Intermittent fasting and fasting is another technique. There are various forms of intermittent fasting and all these forms lead to a lot of cellular, cellular mechanisms which help in reversal of obesity and diabetes. So we can follow what's clear, that is the energy consumption should be 20 calories per kilogram, which roughly translate to around 1,000, 1,400 calories to reduce weight and not more than 1,800 calories during the uh, main weight maintenance phase. And the distribution of macronutrients should be less than 50% of carbohydrates, 20% of energy coming from protein and 30% from fat. And this food plate, which was recommended by the Eat Lancet Commission in 2019 is the way forward, which when simplified gives half the plate with fruits and vegetables, proteins, the half of the other half, and no more than quarter of the plate being filled with grains. So a healthy balanced diet means a lot of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, pulses, seafoods, and nuts, and to have less red meat, processed meat, sugary food and drinks, and refined grains like white bread. So finally, let us redefine the situation. Type 2 diabetes is a condition more than required over a long period. More fat than the individual's body can safely store has accumulated, leading to excess liver and pancreatic fat and subsequent loss of plasma glucose control. So, in the early years after diabetes onset, removal of the excess fat in these organs via intensive but achievable weight loss allows for many anormalization of hepatic glucose production and possible beta cell redifferentiation, and the condition can be reversed to normal. So, this is the paradigm shift which we all should attempt for the benefit of our patients. Just to summarize, the fat concepts are changing. We should understand there is an individualized personal fat threshold. The fat, if fat can be reversed, diabetes can be reversed. Good food is essential. Carbohydrates to be, li to be limited to not more than 50% of total energy consumption. Remission of diabetes is possible and we need to move beyond the standard care. We have implemented programs in our clinic based on these and also other some books and maybe, maybe some videos and all. And I would encourage all my colleagues to actively take up this mission for remission of diabetes. Thank you very much.